green, scared, and pretty. There's a red-white disambiguation in the virgin landscape, my little white doll who bathes in tainted water. Yet something of self-knowledge, the unworried concoction of aerosoled air, hair, gaudies the tableau. An ecstasy of shock on the colonial caning. The butch, the naive, and the mousy penai surrounding her aroused her white agony, cut to the butch who wipes her finger on her shirt. Beyond the pale. Of her complexion, she was taught that with it, this green goes. She was built like a tank in drabs, and her face was undone, though the unbecoming mark upon it was popularly said to indicate beauty. The rich landscape aflame cheaply. So paid the brown boy was made to throw himself with vigor against the glass, a carabao chewing distantly on a long frond. By this logic, first defiled and exploded, is a fate not so much to be pitied as depended on. Their end goal of failure. Gleaming sheets of straight black hair under which two twins labor aimlessly in the loamy, sucking dirt. Meanwhile, the blonde speaks with breath and enunciation of solitary to the overwrought Judy in a bamboo cage. Clasping her arms around her knees, she signaled to herself and to others the perceived superfluousness of her presence. What she did was bounce in transport on the haphazard wagon. She drank them under the table. Was it her exceptional brown body which permitted her to do so? Of all the things I might have expected. Was it the sexlessness of her fatigues, her androgyny? against a dark brown background. She perceives the unscrupulous oriental and wide-eyed demonstration of the blue within, punished for her swarthy attraction. He had that Neanderthal look to begin with, natively disturbing plants for food, whose indistinguishable mass of bitter leaves repulsed the pinched-nosed prisoner.